In this video, we're going to introduce parametric modeling and how to do that with NX. We're going to use the expressions editor. And what we're going to do is model a fuel tank. And in this example, our customer is going to give us the length of the tank in inches, the width of the tank in inches, and they're going to specify a capacity in gallons. Our expressions editor is going to take the capacity in gallons and convert that to cubic inches. It's going to take that volume and divide by the cross-sectional area of the length and the width and give us the height. And so what we'll be able to do is plug in capacity in gallons and our CAD software will generate a tank that is the appropriate height for that volume. So to get started, we'll start a new drawing. And since we are dealing with US customary units, we will make sure that we start an inch drawing. And we can name it uh, whatever we want to. Uh, do keep in mind that generally in NX, it's very important to uh, name things properly and to put them in a proper location. So uh, for this example, I'm just going to call it fuel tank. And that will be fine. All right, so parametric modeling means that we have, there's sort of a separation between the dimensional data, the numerical data, and the geometric data. So the geometry is one thing, and the actual values are something separate. So before we even do any modeling, what we want to do is come up with the values. We want to go in to what's called the expressions editor, and that's found under tools, expressions, and what we're going to do is make expressions or variables for each of the dimensions that we're interested in. So for example, uh, we know that we need the length. And I will say that you want to pay attention to the capitalization. It's difficult to make changes in the capitalization, or really it's difficult to make changes at all to expressions after they've been built. So kind of try to pay attention to what you're doing, and I'll try to do that as well. So here we are. Uh, length, our dimensionality is length. The units are inches, and that's going to be true for our length. All right. I'm just going to plug in a placeholder, uh, maybe 72 inches for the length. I could just leave it at zero, uh, but we do want to make sure before we go in and do our modeling that we have non-zero values in here in our formulas. So there's length. We'll do width, and I did not show you. I, I hit apply after each of these, and I will give that a, a length as well mashing your mouse button, middle mouse wheel, as usual in NX, works as if it's the apply button as well. So that can be handy. Uh, let's see, height. And now height is going to be calculated. And so for now, I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to leave that zero for now because that's going to be calculated. Our customer is also going to give us a value called capacity. Now our capacity is going to be given in gallons. Let's just say it's 200 gallons. But when we come over here, we need to actually change our units. NX is going to be a stickler for this. And we could try going to volume, but you'll see that for volume, all it's doing is giving us these cubic, uh, cubic measurements. It doesn't give us things like gallons. But what we can do is make this dimensionality unitless. Uh, so, so temporarily, we know this is gallons. Now we want to put a comment out here to remind us about that. So there is this comment column and that can be handy. Okay, so now what we need to do is convert our volume in gallons to a, we'll just, or our capacity in gallons to a volume in cubic inches. Okay, so I'm going to make a new expression called volume and what we want to do is calculate and convert gallons to cubic inches. All right, so there are 231 cubic inches per gallon. So we'll say 231 times. And we could type in capacity, but if we come over here and double click, we can actually just add that into our formula. And we'll apply that. All right, so we're getting 46,200 cubic inches. Oops, those are not cubic inches, so let me change that to volume, cubic inches, and let's say apply. Now the reason that it did not give us an error is because we started with a, uh, our capacity was unitless. So it would have, uh, if, if there was actually a 
unit of volume gallons, this would have thrown an error because NX is going to enforce the dimensions. So uh, enforce the units. Now, like we said before, what we're doing is we're calculating the volume in cubic inches and then to find the height, we're going to divide by the area. So the area is the length times the width. Now we could do this all in one formula, but I find that it's it's easier for other people to come back sometimes and check your work and make modifications if you're pretty explicit in the expressions editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a new expression called area. I'll capitalize that. Try to keep all the capitalization consistent. This area needs to be have actual dimensionality of area and units of square inches and this is going to it's going to equal the length times the width and I'll apply that alright so I have that area now what we want to do is solve for the height so the height is going to be equal to the volume divided by the area all right, and we get 17.8 or so. So at this point, we have everything we need to actually model the fuel tank. And to model the fuel tank, we really just need width, length, and height. And all of these are calculated for us. So I'm going to say OK. I will say that when you're using the expressions editor, I find it real easy to accidentally lose a lot of work. So as you work with the expressions editor, really as you get each expression put in here, it's a good idea to hit apply. And so now that we're done, we'll say OK. Now we're ready to begin modeling. We'll go to Home, Sketch, and we'll put our sketch on the top view. And we will sketch a rectangle starting it at the sketch origin and we'll dimension this this can be the length when we're out here like this uh, NX wants an equal sign and we'll just type in the length and we do want to scale the sketch because this is our first dimension typically we're always gonna say yes in that case and then we're going to find the the width so this is equal width now you'll notice if you come back to change these, you'll notice it's grayed out. And what NX is doing there is trying to prevent you from accidentally putting in just a number for a dimension that should be calculated. And so he's kind of trying to, to wave you off of messing something up there. So that's why that will be grayed out. Now our sketch is fully defined. We'll say finish. And now you'll notice that part of the view is missing here. So the reason for that is because we started uh, our sketch. Uh, NX kind of thought that we were going to be creating something small, uh, but we didn't. And uh, NX does not calculate everything in all of space to display on the screen. It only picks a little a box, and it only picks the area between two planes. Those are called the clipping planes. And that's why this is being trimmed off is because it passes through those visuals, visualization clipping planes. To get this uh, fixed, we're going to use our fit command under view uh, fit or alt F or control F. So control F will fit and that will recalculate those clipping planes and that will fix that. Now we're going to go to extrude and very similar to the way that we keyed in expressions for our uh, for our length and our width, he's keyed in the height. Now, he's actually, since I did this uh, earlier, he's actually gone in and grabbed that height variable. I'm going to undo that. So what I'm going to do is click over here on the equal sign and say, just make that a constant. Okay. And so I could have plugged in anything else here that I wanted to. When you start this, you're going to get, uh, you're going to have just a constant in there. And let's convert that back to the height now. So we'll just type in height and apply. You'll notice that in this dialog box we don't put the equal sign so I'm not sure why it's different uh, out in the uh, the sketch editor. If you know why just let me know in the comments. So we have extruded this 
17.8, or actually, more correctly, the height that was calculated. All right, so let's just double check that. Okay, that's all fine. Now, we have access to our user expressions right here in the part navigator. So what we can do, if we want to change the capacity of this tank, we can change it right here. So this is a, the, these are the dimensions of a 200 gallon tank. If we wanted a 100 gallon tank, we could just key it in right there. If we wanted a 350 gallon tank, we could just key in 350 gallons and the software would automatically calculate that height for us. Now what I'd like to do is verify that this has that this shape actually has a volume uh, that's equal to 350 gallons. So what we're going to do is go to analysis, measure, and we want to make sure that we have our body results enabled and we're going to select an object. We want to make sure that we're filtering either for no selection filter or for a solid body and we will select that solid and you can see that we get a volume of 80,850 cubic inches. I'm going to cheat and go to Google and just type in 350. And you can see we get 80,850 cubic inches. So that's an introduction to parametric modeling.